Hi there, today we are going to learn Arabesque by Friedrich Burgmüller. I will play it for you first and then I'll explain how to practice this piece. And after that, I'll play it one more time slowly. This is a really lovely piece that is studied in all music schools and played by beginners in all countries. So today we're going to talk about techniques and how to study this piece. First, I suggest you study with studying left hand. Left hand plays these staccato chords, A minor staccato chords. Really crisp sound, right? Rather than this. What's the difference? I'm like grabbing and scratching these keys like really quickly, like this. Up. Pretty much for four bars it's the same chords. Then it changes to D minor. I suggest always to practice transition between chords, just playing them back and forth. We've got the next chord, which is an inversion of the C minor. G, C and E. We play five, two and one. So from here, we have to practice this transition again, right? Many times. When you practice all transitions from one chord to another and feel confident, now you can easily play the left hand. Let's play it together. You ready? Next chord, back to A minor, C, E, one more. Again, A minor, back to A minor, C, and we are done with that. How do you practice right hand? It has these five finger runs, and of course we need to play it very crisp and clear. Every note needs to have the same duration, so if you he hear some irregularities, you need to pay more attention. You can practice with a metronome and also lifting fingers high, right? Many times fingers just keep dragging on the keys. They don't get off on time. That's what happens. That's what can delay and can um, make these sounds pronounced very mushy, you know, as if uh, you're speaking with a <laughs> potato in your mouth. So. Last note has a staccato there, playing legato, lifting fingers very high. And then, like in the left hand, we're gonna use the same technique that I explained, like grabbing something with a nail, like scratching and jumping up, like you scratch something and run away. <laughs> there is also a really fun way to practice staccato. You can practice it like this. The eraser needs to jump forward. If it jumps up or some other place, the technique is incorrect. Your wrist jumps up very quickly. So one more time, it would be... You see? That's really fun. Try it at home. <laughs> it's safe. You can practice chords with your left hand again using this uh, eraser. It needs to be projected forward. So your wrist goes up, hand go straight down and the eraser needs to come here. We have got this melody here. 
with accent. Just give it a little, little tiny delay and it will accent the note. It will give it special importance rather than like hit it very hard, right? There is this fourth sound on it. After that sudden loud sound, you go back to piano ligero. Okay? When we go to the next part, very, very beautiful melody. So it's pretty different from the A part, from the beginning. Try to sing this melody, right? It's really helpful if you can hum or sing along with this music when you play. When you have large leaps, like fourth is a large leap already. So there is a trick to make the melody sound really smooth and nice and beautiful. Your finger needs to join the air sort of a circle when moving towards the next. So you play first note, then you're, you're going to play with the second finger. So it will draw sort of a circle and then another finger draws sort of a circle. Every time legato ends, right? Music needs to take a breath. Actually, you lift your wrist up, not the hand up. Right? So here you've got even larger leap, so you draw a larger circle with your pinky. Starting from, so you play first finger A, it's a bar end of 22. Then you draw a large circle. What difference does it make? We could just put our fingers on the keys, right? And sound is there due to this nice, quiet, quite a delay. And this delay doesn't go off tempo still, right? So it's really, really tiny, tiny, tiny delay. So also this movement make our finger land on a key softly. The slower the finger attacks the key, the smoother the sound is. Here you slow down on this part, okay? Usually when the melody goes up, we naturally have to do crescendo. And here, this part with the mezzo forte. And this sound grows and here it's, right, gets more intense, the forte. Right, and then it only goes down here. Slows down. And we return to our tempo, bar 27, back to piano, and the main theme returns back. Usually there is lots of technical <laughs> issues in the ending, in the very ending here. This transition, you have to jump from one part of a piano to another part of a piano. You study hand separately first. This passage ends on A. And after it, there is a small pause, enough to move your hand to a new position. And here you play the chord. To practice this transition, you would just go back and forth with your hand till you feel you can do it without any doubt. When you feel you are good with that, you shorten the pause between these notes and you play the second note with accent like this. The same with the left hand. So we finished on A here. And here you go, first you go just back and forth, very slowly. So your hand physically gets used to this hand position and plays correct notes. After that, you do the same, right? Faster. And then when you are done, you go with both hands. And you are done with that. Very good.
please subscribe to the channel and give thumbs up to the video. Also, tell me in the comments what next piece would you like to learn and go practice. See you next time.